the guitar at uh, 440 for those of you who want to do this with the guitar which is what I recommend of course Hola Ma Mikey, ¿cómo andamos? Buena, Mikey, buena. Vamos a hacer un recap aquí, una especie de refresco de memoria. A ver un poco, entonces. El tema era entonces las uh, frases, ¿se acuerda? ¿Te, ¿Te acuerdas, Mike? ¿Se acuerdan? Do you remember? Hi, bud. How are you, dear friend? So we were, uh, uh, I suppose you guys have the score in front of you and that you guys are in tune with me. So, we were looking at uh, green leaves as uh, 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 phrases in a speech. Estábamos viendo green leaves como si fuera un discurso y cada una de las partes como frases de un discurso. So, we were dealing with the first two phrases, las primeras dos frases, donde, donde teníamos involucrados a nuestros tres músicos imaginarios o a nuestro grupo Imaginary. So we were dealing with the piece and with each one of the voices uh, that make up a green leaves as if we were dealing with a small ensemble, an ensemble made of three or four musicians, depending. In this particular case, we're dealing with three musicians. Remember, we have uh, phrase one, phrase two. So again, these were the first two phrases we looked at yesterday. Now, what I suggest you guys do is that you work what we do in class uh, before the next class because the key to an efficient practice is to not have too much to deal with in the first place. Entonces, mi primer consejo es que 
trabajen el material que desarrollamos la clase el día que lo desarrollamos la clase o antes de la siguiente clase. Porque la clave de todo esto es asignarle un tiempo bien concentrado a la mente para que esté concentrada en el trabajo y solo se puede lidiar con tanto material. Por ende, lo que vamos a ver hoy es lo que a nuestra mente le sirve para lidiar hoy. ¿okay? Entonces, so we're going to deal with the phrase number three. And phrase number three starts off with the ending of phrase number two. So we had this, this scenario here. Here, we have uh, to build up what is usually referred to as a B minor chord. A B minor chord or any chord is uh, that scenario where more than one note, two at least, normally three, but no, minimum two, are performed at the same time. Two notes performed at the same time are implying that we're playing a chord. And the guitar has some chords which are very recurrent, like C major, D major, A minor, A major. And in this particular case, we have B minor. Entonces, lo que estoy comentando es que deberíamos entender algo de lo que significa un acorde. Un acorde es toda vez que un músico ejecuta más de una nota al mismo tiempo. Esto es melodía. This is melody, melodía. Pero armonía, chords, is E minor. E minor. Now, two notes, as I'm doing here, is a chord. But typically, the chord is made of three notes. The notes in between complete the chord. So the complete B minor chord, the partial B minor chord would be... But the full B minor chord is... Remember? These are chords, and we have one of the chords of uh, Hotel California right in the middle of uh, this uh, green sleeves. Is this this one? So, to complete the second phrase and start off the third phrase, we have. Finger three on the F sharp and finger four on the B. And that's completing phrase number two, and it sets me up to start off phrase number three. Entonces, con estas dos notas, con el Fa sostenido y el Si en la tercera, con el dedo cuatro, estoy completando la frase número dos. Entonces... Again. While you do that, and I would like you guys to try this at least five times, meanwhile I get my metronome, I left it over there. Get the metronome so we can work it together with the metronome. Give me one second, please. Hi, bud. Good afternoon to you too, buddy. 
Thank you always for your generous contributions, really. I really appreciate it, buddy. You have a sensitive heart, and that's very much appreciated. Okay, so, phrase number one. Phrase number two. As soon as we finish playing this B minor chord, we enter a total relaxation of the left hand. And we do that by releasing all tension in the left hand. You will probably notice that your hand has been drained of energy for having to squeeze a bar chord throughout the B minor sequence there. Ni bien terminan de ejecutar esta posición en el acorde de Si menor, tienen que absolutamente eh, relajar la mano a través de una relajación total. Y eso se consigue sacando la energía de apriete, haciendo simplemente esto. Y dejar que la sangre fluya y el, el ácido láctico sea, sea expulsado. Entonces... And we use this E, open string E, first string, to, you, to cover up our relaxation. If I were to play this piece live, you would see me do something like this. As soon as I do that, I'm relaxing the hand, and then I use the base of finger one this part of the finger to stop the F sharp, this note here. I stop it with the base of finger one. Voy a pulsar esta cuerda y apretarla contra el diapasón no usando la punta de mi dedo, sino que usando la base de mi dedo. El dedo tiene que ser visto así, como que tiene dos tips, dos puntas, punta uno y punta dos. Uno está siempre mentalmente acostumbrado a pensar que el dedo tiene esta parte solo para pulsar las notas, no. De hecho tiene varias. La siguiente importante es la, esta parte aquí. Se usa mucho para apretar todo lo que se use en la primera cuerda, fíjense. Everything that's usually on the first string, you can very much and very easily play with this part of your finger. Just as well as... So you have to look at your finger as a multi-tip element in your hand. Don't just look at this part of your finger as the only part where you can stop the note. No mires solo esa parte de tu dedo como si fuera la única parte del dedo que puede apretar la nota contra el diapasón. En este caso concreto vamos a usar esta, pero hay veces que usarás esta parte. Pero ahora vamos a interesarnos de esta parte. Entonces, la frase número 3 comienza así. Phrase number three starts like this. On the score, you will see that it says here, use the base of a finger of finger one. It's right there on the score. It says it's right there. This is the type of things that you write down on the score. Of course, these are scores for my students. Esas son las partituras para mis alumnos. Y yo ya los sirvo a mis alumnos. I serve my students by giving them very detailed scores. Not just notes. Notes and annotations like left hand, fingers, some of the mechanics involved like base of finger one. Yo incorporo mucha, mucha dirección y muchas instrucciones con la partitura. Por ende, es algo que les, eh, les quiero inculcar a ustedes para que usen la partitura de una manera muy sabia, anotando por escrito todo tipo de instrucción que les va a ayudar a la ejecución. Every single piece of instruction that you're going to be dictating to your fingers in order to perform a musical phrase, you ought to jot down on the score. In your own words, using color, using whatever means you find uh, useful. Okay? Now... So, phrase number three. Naturally, you've always been accustomed to do this this way, which is fine. But you want to teach your hand to be wise. 
And it's not wise to go through all this move when you can just go like that. Okay, you, you have to start using wise mechanisms in your technique in order to make your playing intelligent. Because now you have a choice. You can go between this part of the finger or you could use this part of the finger. But there are going to be times when you won't have that choice available and you better know how to use this option. So you train the option when it's not really the only way out. Es bueno que tú entiendas que a pesar de que en este escenario concreto tú puedes perfectamente tocar esta secuencia usando la punta 1 del dedo que sería. No por eso tienes que usar la menos inteligente, que en este caso es justamente esta. La más inteligente es esta. Y tienes que acostumbrarte a tocar de una manera inteligente porque eso se aplica a ese escenario, pero también a escenarios donde la única opción para poder zafar es usar la salida inteligente. ¿Ok? Entonces... Once you play that, there is a fill in. Index, middle, index. Third, second, third. String. Segunda, tercera, segunda, tercera. First, third. Fifth, first. This would be a C major chord. C major is a... C major is... C major is... C major is just a tonality and this is the chord. The bass chord of C major. Here you're only going to be using two of the notes of the chord. This one and this one. You're not going to be using the third. You're going to be using these two. So, the whole phrase. La, la frase completa. When you go, you use these two open strings. Usas esas dos cuerdas al aire para posicionar tu mano para el do. So the whole sequence. You use the open string again to move here. Usas la cuerda al aire aquí para girar y presentarte otra vez en el C. Entonces, de vuelta, mira la mecánica. Now let's go with the metronome and we're going to do this whole sequence 10 times. Vamos a tocar esta secuencia 10 veces con el metrónomo. Traten de seguirme.
Repetition, repetition to the point where you really just know what to do without thinking. You have taught the fingers what to do. Repetición, repetición, hasta, no el cansancio, pero hasta que literalmente le encuentren el gusto, porque eventualmente a medida que va repitiendo se vuelve todo más simple. Ok, vamos desde el comienzo de las... Let's do the three phrases with the metronome. Okay, phrase number one first, we're going to be recapping. Vamos a hacer un, re un resumen, primera frase. Let's go slower, muy rápido. Let's do the three phrases together. Ciao Dario, come stai? Bello, piacere vederti. Allora, entonces, so, let's recap the mechanics involved in uh, uh, green sleeves. Now, please understand that this is the only way I know you can achieve the goal of playing classical guitar the right way, which means that I've uh, not started playing guitar yesterday. I'm uh, celebrating my 50th, 50th anniversary as a classical guitarist, and I've tried uh, different uh, ways of achieving the goal. And I'm proposing you what I've distilled throughout the years, okay? Estoy diciendo que eh, esto que yo les estoy proponiendo es, en mi opinión, la única manera en que esto de la guitarra clásica pueda funcionar. De hecho, Créanme, yo estoy en contacto con guitarristas que se consideran profesionales y el approach que ellos tienen es muy parecido. Cualquier otro tipo de approach a la guitarra les va a llevar hasta cierto punto y tarde o temprano, más bien temprano que tarde, se transformará en frustración, falta de constancia y que la guitarra quede a juntar polvo en alguna esquina. Estoy diciendo que apunto la, la metodología que he visto Fashion Over es la metodología que se usa a nivel profesional, profesionista, porque... Le altre metodologie che di fatto ho provato a lungo di tanti anni eh, ti portano fino a un certo punto dove prima o poi la frustrazione si ti mette dentro e la chitarra finisce in un angolino della casa appunto a cimolare polvere. Quindi questo approach fa sì che tutti gli aspetti del, del suonare la chitarra siano eh, affrontati simultaneamente. The approach that I'm proposing to you guys is one where every aspect of guitar playing is taken into consideration when learning the piece. Okay, so, phrase one, frase uno, frase uno. Again. Actually, it's uh,
Would you say that this phrase is nailed down? If yes, good. When, you, when it sounds like this, you can say it's nailed down. Phrase number two, frase numero due, dos. This is where the phrase ends, where we should. Phrase number three. Let's add these two notes here. And we have the whole staff nailed down. Y así tendremos toda la, todo el pentagrama prendido. Let's do the whole thing and let's do it uh, let's do it 10 times 10 times with the metronome I'm not going to stop I will just go through if you cannot follow just stop wait and get in as soon as you can Voy a iniciar aquello 10 veces usted me prometió que seguir a mí si no pueden en algún momento se equivocan y tienen que parar paran y tratan de de meterse de vuelta apenas puedan okay Ten times, dieci volte. Dieci volte tutta la, tutta la prima, la, la seconda, il secondo pentagramma. Ready? One, two. Seven.
This is of course uh, what you ought to aim at. And uh, of course I would like to invite you, quisiera invitarles, to post on YouTube or you send them via mail since videos can be quite heavy. Some we might have problems me receiving them through the mail. So I would encourage you to have your own YouTube channel. Les, les, les aliento a que se hagan un canal de YouTube y comiencen a subir sus, uh, sus intentos a ese canal y luego me envían el link para que yo pueda revisar lo que están haciendo. I encourage you guys to open a YouTube channel, upload whatever it is that we are practicing together so that I can see what is you are doing and look at your hands and give you some tips you will give me the link to that through the mail or through Facebook or through YouTube, doesn't really matter how. You just point me to the link. Vi sto raccomandando se poteste aprire il vostro proprio canale di YouTube sul quale mettereste i vostri video eh, eh, dove voi fate la vostra, vostra pratica che io possa, voi possiate poi mandarmi il link e io appunto guarderei il link e vi potrei dare qualche suggerimento. Uh, the, the links that you post do not have to be public. In other words, you don't have, do not have to have a public open video channel because you might want to keep it reserved for me, which I understand. If that is the case, you just uh, choose when you put up the, the, the video, you choose uh, um, private uh, uh, um, or unavailable, not public, okay? Lo que pueden hacer si no quieren que sus videos sean visibles a cualquiera es cuando lo suben, entre las opciones que les da YouTube es hacerlo público o hacerlo limitado o hacerlo privado. En el caso que lo haga privado, la única manera que alguien lo puede ver es si ustedes le pasan el link. La única manera en que alguien podrá ver el vuestro link, el vuestro video, se vos le mandate el link, quindi lo dovete salir, meter su YouTube en forma de private, privada. ¿sí? Vi encorajo a hacerlo porque Siccome io so che questa è una lezione, senza dubbio, però è una lezione one way, io vi sto facendo vedere, però non ho il feedback di vedere cosa state facendo voi e potervi di una maniera più diretta aiutare. I do not have a feedback, so I cannot help you as much as I would like to. So unless you put up your videos where you try out the stuff we look at in class, it's very hard for me to give you a solid and very personalized feedback, ok? So I encourage you, open a, a YouTube channel. By the way, if you have not opened up a YouTube channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. You don't have to wait, have to, wait to be Andres Segovia uh, in order to have a YouTube channel. You just open the channel and uh, the public will come to your channel when you have something that you offer that is worth seeing. So don't worry, just put up a channel. It's totally free. YouTube doesn't charge a single dime to open up a channel. Okay. Vamos a ver, técnica, technique. So, excuse me. Now, I'd like to work with you guys an exercise which uh, has a lot to do with what we are doing here. Because Green's Leaves uh, was my choice because one of you guys asked me about Green's Leaves and I thought it was a good idea to make it into a masterclass. But it's not necessarily, gracias Mikey, but it's not necessarily the piece I would have started off with. In other words, uh, uh, let alone that we were definitely finished working on, uh, on green sleeves, it's also true that with the technique that you've developed to this point, you can perfectly go ahead and apply the same concepts in what it is left to play ahead. Lo que estoy diciendo es que eh, Green Sleeves fue la opción que yo elegí a raíz de que uno de ustedes me pidió algo acerca de Green Sleeves y me pareció una buena idea y da, incluso hacer la clase alrededor de Green Sleeves. Pero si me preguntan a mí, les diría con toda sinceridad que mi opinión era iniciar con otra pieza que pero tiene mucho que ver también con Green Sleeves. Y de hecho, quisiera mostrarles algunas cosas de Green Sleeves que ustedes pueden aplicar a, vuestro, a vuestra técnica. Y es a través de otra pieza. Vieron como aquí tenemos...
es muy eh, nostálgico y trae a la memoria Entonces, lo que yo les propondría ahora hacer para simplemente como un enfoque técnico desarrollar el arpegio. So I would like to propose to you that as we, since we finished the first staff, the first three phrases of Green's Leaves, we leave that part of our class boxed. We've dealt with that. Check. I would like to introduce to you another piece as a form of developing your arpeggio. A very nice, steady arpeggio. And we're going to do that using this piece, which is called Romance. So, why romance? Because romance deals with the right hand in a very steady way. ¿Por qué romance? Porque romance hace que nos enfoquemos en el arpejo de la mano derecha que es constante y es así persistente como literalmente una gotita de agua que cae sobre una roca. Sería... Every three beats, ogni tre colpi del metrónomo viene un vaso, miren, pam, 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 the pam is a bass, let's go slower, or let's hit one note for each beat, Let's do this together. Hagamos eso juntos. Facciamo questo assieme. Solamente la mano sinistra qui sul tacco della chitarra, a prendere la chitarra così e concentriamoci sulla mano destra solamente. Let's concentrate. Let's put all our attention onto the right hand. Mano derecha, tutta la nostra attenzione. This is how arpeggio work. Así trabaja ese arpeggio. La mano the hand in this position, relaxed. Relax it. Like this. Curved. Now, get a hold of string six and string one. Feel them like you are bending the strings of an arrow. Imaginati, imaginati di avere la, una freccia nella corda di un arco con, la, con il dito che sarebbe la freccia e la corda della chitarra è la corda dell'arco, tu la devi mettere in dentro, così. Sentire quello, quella, 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 stre, quella strinta. Feel that, uh, siente esa, esa pretón che haces con il anulare e il pulgar. Esto. Però tienes que hacerlo de una manera así, muy cerrando il pugno e evitando saltar. You have to do that by closing your hand and avoiding the Jump and down. So you go. As soon as you've done that, you go. 
second string with the middle finger, third string with the index finger. Sixth string with the first, middle finger, index finger. So this is arpeggio and I want you guys to do it with me. Let's do it at this speed where each one of the tic tacs is a note. So we go. You play the bass when I say so. Let's do this for one minute, okay? So ready, get ready for this thing. We're gonna do it together for one minute, non-stop. Uh, timer. Here it goes. Uh, one minute. Go. One, two, three. So, uh, okay, I got the thing wrong. It was one hour. Should I put it down one minute? Okay, okay, custom. Uh, one minute, okay. Now, let's do the same thing, but now we're gonna put finger four on the B here. And uh, we keep the curvature of the finger. Mettiamo il dito 4 sul Si, sulla prima corda, e manteniamo la curvatura del dito e queste dita quanto più rilassate possibile. Estos dedos cuanto más relajados posibles, evitar esto, que los dedos estén relajados así. Que el, make sure your fingers are relaxed, those fingers that are not playing ought to be relaxed, because one tends to tense them like that, and no, that's not good. You just put tension on finger 4 here, y mantieni queste dita Relax. E con questo dito sul C si, facciamo un giro completo. Un giro completo va dal basso a basso. Sarebbe... That's one round. One round goes from bass to bass. Una vuelta completa va de bajo a bajo. Tenendo questo rilassato, keeping this relaxed, let's do this for one minute. It's very likely that you're going to be feeling a little bit of pain at the tip of your finger. Don't worry. No se preocupe si sienten un poquito de dolor aquí en la parte de la punta hasta que se le forma el callito. Una semana, one week for the callus to be formed and the pain will be gone. But for the moment, no pain, no gain. So get finger four ready. Let's go with this thing for one minute. One minute, let's go. B. 
Base. Base. Basso. As you have probably noticed, one minute with a chronom with a timer is one minute. It can really last a long time. Como se habrá dado cuenta, un minuto con un cronómetro dura un minuto. Por ende, cuando, al, cuando yo le digo a mis alumnos que estudien 30 minutos por día, me refiero a 30 minutos con un cronómetro. When I tell my students to practice 30 minutes a day, I mean 30 minutes with a timer. You don't count just sitting down, thinking about uh, lunch or dinner. You, you count practice when you have the metronome going or when you have your full attention on the instrument. And you stop your timer every time you start uh, wandering with your mind. You will see that 30 minutes might well last into an hour and a half and sometimes even two hours. Guaranteed, you will see that. So 30 minutes a day is what I recommend, and if you achieve the goal, 30 minutes, real minutes, a day, every day, I guarantee you guitar mastery. You don't put that part into the equation, equation do not even waste your time. Not, not necessary, I already know the outcome. No practice, no results. No way, no results. Okay, so don't uh, you fool yourself. 30 minutes. Very much like a Spartan soldier will get you where you want to go, which is playing like a master. So, recapping, it's almost time. No, we still have some, uh, some eight minutes. Okay, now let, let's recap. Your job is, one, print the score. This is not a suggestion. You don't need to know how to read music. You don't need to read music. You just need to print the score and if you are an average intelligent person let alone that you might not recognize what that particular dot is pointing to you at least can figure out how the music moves if it's steady if it's regular if it's got some jumps up and down it tells you a lot the score besides just giving you the name note la partitura es la primera instrucción importantísima imprímala Imprímela, porque que te sientas músico y no sepas leer música es una vergüenza. Más aún cuando leer música no está hecho para complicarte la vida, sino para hacértela más fácil. Por ende, hay un bloqueo mental donde tú ves la partitura como un enemigo y no es un enemigo. Entonces, imprime la partitura, aunque no entiendas un pito, pero vas a entender algunas cosas, como por ejemplo la forma de la música, la altura de las notas, eh, cómo se mueve esto de una manera brusca o de una manera muy gradual. Hay mucho que se puede entender de la partitura sin necesariamente entender si esto es un do o un re. Otra cosa, en la partitura aparecen los dedos que tienes que usar. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Está escrito acá, un, dos, tres, cuatro. ¿Qué dedo tienes que usar? También te dice que el dedo de la mano derecha, pulgar, índice, medio, un lado. The score gives you a lot of information besides the name note. It tells you what finger to use to play this first note. What left hand finger to use to play that note and so on. Okay, so print score is instruction number one. Instruction number two, to get you going, get the metronome at about um, 130, 132 is a good number. And do this for one minute, even before you start uh, anything else. Sit down like that. You can put this hand on your lap like that and go. This speed is awesome. One minute.
If you really want to make it uh, a warm up, introduce finger four. And your mind ought to be totally involved in the playing. Saca todo lo que no sea la nota que estás tocando con tu mente. Saca todo. One minute. So, one minute before you even start anything else, just to get in the right mood. When I start off my practice, there is a video on mangore.com. Please jot down my, my website is 20 plus years old, 1997. So it's 23 years old. It's got everything I know plus much more on it. Videos by the thousands made by me playing, practicing. It's a mine, a gold mine. Go to mangore.com, look for in the menu, in the search practice, daily practice. My practice starts off like this. This is a good way, but my practice is like this. That is nailed down, I go a little bit faster, okay? Each one of the musical elements is very important. Cada nota es importantísima. Ogni nota es importantísima. Concentrarse su ogni nota. Vado al máximo, vediamo come viene poi. what I do practically speaking every day unless I've practiced till late in the evenings therefore when I wake up in the morning my hands are usually already warmed up but what I'm saying is you have to focus on sound and getting your sound steady lo que tienen que hacer es justamente enfocarse en el sonido que cada nota es importante 
si tú fueras un pianista, si tú fueras un pianista, if you were a piano player, and you just never played a piano before in your life, never, and you sit down at a piano and you go, bling, that note is going to come out perfect, okay? If you are a guitar player and I tell you play this note perfect, you're not going to be able to do so with the same ease that you would do it on a piano. On the piano, I would just have to point to a given key and you would have to press that key, just like you press a typewriter or just as you press a button on your PlayStation. On the guitar, you have to literally make up the sound created under your fingertips. And this scale is teaching you how to use your keyboard. This is our keyboard and you have to be very proficient on it. So. When you start your practice, get down into your instrument and be a guitar player. So put down this E, this B, and go. And listen to every note for one minute. You will see that after one minute of that, your mind is soothed, your fingers feel warm, and you're ready for practice. Step two, once you've done that, get the score. Look, review the annotations that you put down on the score. Todo lo que has anotado en la, en la partitura del día anterior lo revisas y ahí piensas en las frases. You think about the phrases. Phrase one. Okay, phrase two. Good, phrase three. When that sounds like you remember, metronome, 130 something, 130, let's see here. for one minute. Part two is nailed down and then work your second piece. We're going to be working two pieces simultaneously. We're going to be working green sleeves and romance, okay? Because I learned this from Pope John Paul II. He used to say, and I found that to be very true, that he thought that he would make better use of his time when he did two things simultaneously. So he would be writing a letter and at the same time he was uh, looking for information for a sermon. And I tried that, approaching two pieces at the same time. It's a very good way of using your practice. So you have two fronts onto which you are advancing. And you have your schedule to keep in mind. 30 minutes a day, one hour a day, that depends on you. But 30 minutes ought to be the least you practice. 30 minutes a day. So once your first 15 minutes are through with the arpeggio sequence and the green sleeves that we've been doing to this moment, then you tackle romance. And tomorrow we're going to look at the first part of romance. We're going to do it just real, real easy because it's e actually easier than green sleeves. So we're going to go through it real fast. Don't worry about that. For now, the class is uh, through, and I would like to, first of all, thank you guys for being there. Thank you for your support. It really means a lot because there's not many ways that we can say thank you, and let alone that I know that you're thankful. You know, doing our best to help each other out is what's just, just, okay? So let's just do with that. Uh, I also wanna encourage you to not give up. Just stay with me, stick with me, I promise you, that if you are here in class for the next 10 days, one week maybe, you will have one piece, one whole piece nailed down 
and you will play it beautifully. I promise. But you have to be here. I cannot do that for you. Is it the same if you cannot attend live and you watch the class uh, when, it's, uh, when it's already on, um, on the YouTube channel? Yes, it's practically the same, but not exactly. Because I know that we're going to be developing a way of uh, getting our feedback back and forth. In other words, you're always welcome to ask me questions or to look deeper into given aspects, something which you cannot sometimes do. And finally, put up a YouTube channel and send me the link to your work. I want to look at your hands and tell you, uh, Mikey, saca un poco más afuera tu mano. Uh, cuando te mueves a la posición 5, estás sacando muy afuera el pulgar. Uh, um, uh, but uh, I look at your right, left and I said, but when you bring down the finger one, bring it out a little bit more, bring the wrist up, or uh, when you change positions, I can give you a lot of hints which are very much uh, useful to your playing. So uh, put that channel up, upload your videos and allow me to give you more help. Guys, enjoy your uh, rest of uh, Monday. I will see you guys tonight, 21.30. Eastern Time, a la hora del este de los Estados Unidos, 21 y 30, Facebook, concert. Look forward to seeing you guys. Thank you.